Praise God. Well, I feel the Lord in here today. <clears throat> Such a spirit of appreciation to come with these songs. <clears throat> Sister Cindy's been reaching in, touching the spirit for us lately. <clears throat> Not that she hadn't always, but it just seems like there's been a special, special help from the Lord in these last few services, and <clears throat> and uh, I'm thankful for that. We certainly need Him, don't we? Uh, <clears throat> he. Uh, <clears throat> He's just such a awesome God. Such <clears throat> he's he's such a help. Even in that song says he's a friend indeed. Even in the <clears throat> what well, does it say that? Even when I'm not in need, that's what the part I wanted. Even when <clears throat> I should have said when I don't think I'm in need. <laughs> Hey, we're always in need, but <clears throat> but uh, sometimes we don't know it. <clears throat> Somebody said that it's <clears throat> what's bad is when you don't know that you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> I'll say that again. It's bad when you don't know what you don't know that you don't know. <clears throat> and uh, so, <clears throat> but the Lord helps us even in the times of when we don't know. He's uh, He's such a savior. He's such a help. <clears throat> he can take a soul that's undone, a soul that's corrupt, <clears throat> a soul that's below. <clears throat> below <clears throat> the low level and lift it up. <clears throat> I was reading that scripture today that said, you know, after the church had fell away, the two witnesses, the word of God, said the spirit of God came up in them, up, <clears throat> came into them and a voice from heaven said, come up hither. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> Think that the Spirit of God, when it's God's time, even when it's God's time for you and me, whatever our need is, <clears throat> I'm telling you there's so much corruption in the world and all of it has affected all of us. <clears throat> and that's why we're, we're in a low place that God has to lift us out of. Jesus said, no man cometh unto me except my Father draws him. Thank God for the drawing power of, G of God the Father by the Holy Ghost. Thank God that he's able to reach down in the depths of, of the lower pits and lift up those that are in need. Even if you don't know you're in need, he's able. Hallelujah. He's able to lift you up. He's able to meet your need. You can have all kinds of baggage. It comes from the, the flesh of this world. <clears throat> it's like the iniquity. I was mentioning this Thursday night on, on the Facebook broadcast about God visiting the sins of our fathers even to the third, uh, to the third and even the fourth generation. That things get planted in us. Things happen to us. A lot of it. Some of it gets planted, the iniquity of our fathers. <clears throat> that, that includes judgment as well as <clears throat> the planted perverseness of sin that gets planted in us some way. <clears throat> Environment has a lot to do with it. Where you came from. Also, uh, happenings. What happened to you? What happened to you in your life? can really affect you if God and God has to lift you up from all of this I don't care who you are I don't care how what you what's happened to you or where you come from 
There's a God in heaven that's able to cure you of your realness. Whatever it is, God is able to fix you of whatever hurts you. He's able today. Hallelujah. And if we just look up to him and just believe and trust him for his help. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All kinds of things can happen to you. Uh, it Things that gets planted in you. Brother, <coughs> Brother Brown several years ago up, got up in the campground <clears throat> and just brought a message on how we needed to repent. It really touched the congregation, <clears throat> the body back then, that we needed to repent for the sins of our forefathers. I was thinking on that this week, and I thought, it, it, that's deeper than repentance. Just, just, in other words, just saying we need to ask God to forgive us for what our forefathers did. <clears throat> what that really done was bring us to the <clears throat> awareness that there were sins of our forefathers. There were errors. There were things. I don't think they intentionally knew that they were just doing wrong, but I think there was things that they did that we know today that needed corrected. It brought us aware. And repentance don't mean just say, God, I'm sorry. Repentance means, <clears throat> with your help, I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to do different. I'm going to get rid of this problem uh, of sin. <clears throat> and so that brought a great awareness Sometimes God has to help us. He has to bring us to a place of awareness. Sometimes we, we can't see ourselves. We can't see uh, <clears throat> the, our flesh, the needs, you know, the things that's planted in our flesh. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, we need his help. We need his help in those areas. <clears throat> it don't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what, what, you've, what, what has happened to you in your life. <clears throat> God is able to help lift you up out of that and heal you. Only God is able to, to fix some problems. There are some problems that, you know, maybe psychology or sociology of man might be able to help you to a certain extent if it's you know, as far as just helping you get on a good level of behavior. But to get rid of the, <clears throat> to get rid of the spider, you know, the world, all they do is deal with the web. They just keep tearing down the web, working on the, the results <clears throat> of the problem. God is a spider killer. He gets, get, he gets rid of the source. He helps you find and locate the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, you know, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter who you are. <clears throat> we all, every one of us have, we've got baggage of the flesh that either got planted in us, <clears throat> we were affected in environment. Uh, this world that we're living in is, 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 it is a, this world's in trouble. <clears throat> uh, Charlie Johnson's. If you ever listen to his his music, you know he's got a song that said, "This world's in trouble, Lord." <laughs> I like Charles Johnson, brother, <clears throat> brother Emilio Green. Uh, <clears throat> I got him hooked on Charles Charlie Johnson music, <laughs> gospel music, <clears throat> and uh, so. It is a world that's in trouble, and we all are affected <clears throat> by it. But there's a greater power than the effects of this world. That God, God can, he can touch you. He can touch your mind. He can touch your spirit. In fact, he can heal you. I remember when I was a, when I was a young boy, I... I I grew up with a group of men that everybody used tobacco. Everybody in my whole family. I can't think. I I can't think. I can only think of one uncle in my whole family, and he was a dedicated Christian. That's why he didn't use tobacco. But 
uh, all the rest of them, they all smoked, chewed, chewed tobacco, dipped snuff, smoked cigars or pipes. They had something to do with, with tobacco. And, that, and you just felt like when you was a little kid, that's what you're supposed to do as a man. So I just grew up as a boy. I just, you know, they wouldn't let me have, I mean, they'd give me a twig. Uncle Elmer would give me a twig of beech nut, just one twig. He'd pull it out of his sack and give it to me, you know. That made me feel big. I was just a little old kid. <clears throat> Grandpa Smith would always, he'd, he'd always let me light his pipe for him. And he could take a kitchen match, you know, slip it across the bottom of his britches and sink, flame a fire, hold it over that pipe and get it started. He'd let me do it when I'd go see him. Oh, I felt big about that. I had a big old pipe in my mouth. I'd, I'd take that kitchen match and break it three or four times before I'd ever get one to do just right and get it struck. I'd get to lighten that pipe. <clears throat> well, then they'd take me hunting with them <clears throat> at night. It'd be three or four of the men, my dad and his uncle and my grandpa and maybe a couple other uncles, two or three of us cousins. And they'd all be smoking ahead of us, and we had coal oil lamps. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but we'd put a lamp on our head, and we'd fill it full of, uh, <clears throat> what do they call them little rocks they put in there? Huh? No. These are, you put little carbide, carbide rocks. You put little carbide in there, and, <clears throat> and you, you'd, well, I think we put water in there. I think it burned. Carbide would burn. You get it wet with water, and then you could strike it with a flint rock, and it'd light, and there'd just be a little shoot of fire coming. <laughs> had a little round uh, <clears throat> reflector on your head, and it had fire coming out of it, and that's what they had for lights at night to coon hunt. But all them guys would be smoking with all of us cousins would be back there. We'd be finding little grapevines. We'd break them off. Some would be big around like a, like a cigar. Some would be little, little bitty. You'd get one like a Virginia Slims or just a regular cigarette. You know, we, you could make a long one. You could, if you got one too big a hole in it, you could suck fire right down your throat, brother, brother Ray. <laughs> you ever smoked a grapevine? <laughs> yeah, he has. Well, you know, us cousins, that's all. They wouldn't give us a cigarette. I used to, they used to have roll your owns. You know, you had to get cigarette paper and dump out, you could dump out Bull of the Woods. You could dump out Prince Albert. You know, we kids, we used to be at home. We'd, we used to call the pharmacies. We didn't have nothing to do, so we'd get on the phone, dial the pharmacy. You know, we had a phone like that. Just had to dial. They'd dial the pharmacy, and they'd answer. You'd say, y'all got Prince Albert in the can? I'd say, yeah, we got Prince Albert in the can. I'd say, you better let him out. He's going to suffocate. And then we'd hang the phone up, you know. So <clears throat> I learned how to roll cigarettes for, you know, my older cousins. They couldn't afford, you know, back in them days, they could, you could already phone, afford a store-bought pack of cigarettes, so you had to buy a can of Prince Albert. You know, that cost about seven cents. And a pack of cigarette paper and learn how to roll it up, pour you a little bit of tobacco in there and learn how to roll that up and lick the end of it and roll it on up, lick it shut good, twist them ends up, put it in your mouth and light it up. I, I learned how to do that. <coughs> I always... One of my older cousins started rolling my cigarette. I said, let me roll that for you. Let me, let me fix it for you. <laughs> oh, God. See, that got all planted in me. I'm, if ain't nobody smoked, I wouldn't have known nothing about it. But they, they put that in me. They, that got transferred to me. So, of course, I started out smoking. When I was a young boy, I, wasn't, I probably wasn't 13, 14 years old. I was... I had, I was carrying cigarettes around in my socks. Carry a pack of cigarettes, stick them down in my socks. Put them up underneath my bed and underneath my mattress. My mama finally found them. She just cried. She said, my God, son, you're too little to be smoking like this. <clears throat> well, you know, it didn't do her much good. Uh, I just hid them around and found another place to hide them. Finally, she accepted it before I got out of high school. I was carrying it around in my pocket. <clears throat> I liked smoking. I enjoyed it. I never did. I never was a chain smoker. And I smoked about a pack a day after I got grown. Uh, Sister Smith and I 
<clears throat> after we got married, well, we got saved because she liked to die, and I had to get right with God, so I had to quit. But <clears throat> I, I went so far, and I backslid. And one day, me and her was driving down the road, and, and we pulled off an exit. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm fixing to buy me a pack of cigarettes. I could eat a cigarette, cellophane and all, whole package. I just had that desire inside of me. That was, see, that's something that I almost had killed. What I was going to tell you about it was God when, God, when God saved me, he delivered me immediately from smoking. But after I went back to it a few times, he didn't deliver me no more. I had to, learn, I had to quit the hard way, cold turkey. It wasn't easy. But one of the reasons was is in my mind I, enjoy, I liked it. But... <clears throat> Thank God that the Lord was able to, the Lord was able to help me get delivered from that, and that's not even a part of my life. I don't even think about that. I don't even. That's gone. God's. I've overcome that. That's not even part of my character to desire something like that. But that was planted in me. Is what I'm telling you. How sins of our forefathers gets planted in us. <clears throat> a habit of the flesh that's not even good for the flesh. And for the wrong reasons, you know, <clears throat> all kinds of things happens. You know, I was fortunate enough to come up in a good family where I didn't have too much family trouble. I didn't get too much baggage from anything perverseness that went on. Some kids come up with parents that are perverse. You know, there, I, I, would, I would venture to say that <clears throat> more than 50% of every girl today has been violated when they was a child. I'd say it's that. They, they'll tell you it's higher percentage than that, and I believe it. Because people are perverse in this world. And then you can come up with that where you, you, you don't know what to do with it. You can, you can hide it. You can try to sweep it under the rug, but it's still under the rug. It's still there. Only God's able to help you get delivered from this baggage that comes from our environment or what's been planted down into our lives and has affected us. But thank God there's a God in heaven that can deliver you completely 100%. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can go through life, you know, having all kinds of baggage and not even know where it came from or why it's there. And you can live with it and that can make a slave out of you. <coughs> but God in heaven... If you can put your confidence and your trust in God and in the Word of God and the Spirit of God, God can lift you up above any sin, any uh, problem, any situation that can hinder you for a lifetime. And this world is carrying all of that out here. My God, do you know where you'd be if, you, if it wasn't for Jesus? And even after you're serving God, it takes time to get God's help to deliver us from whatever our need is. But saying, here's the good thing. Let me, let me read you a verse. I wasn't going to preach. I was just going to say, I'm glad you're here. But hey, there's a, <clears throat> these uh, overhead projectors we've got is... Uh, I keep telling y'all we're getting new ones, but and Brother Painter and I have <clears throat> we've ordered two and had both of them canceled because of being out of stock. <clears throat> this coronavirus deal has affected uh, shipping all over the world, and anybody that's in in uh, the business world that's de depending on shipping, which we all are depending on shipping and transport these days. <coughs> uh, we, uh, <coughs> we, anyway, they canceled on us, <coughs> but I was just going to tell you, those that wasn't here in Bible study, because everybody knows this, our, our projectors are pretty poor. They just wore out. And, uh, but I did get, we did get two new ones ordered 
we're just going to get one and then see how we liked it and then order the other one. But they're so hard to get. I found a company that had them in stock and they had more than one. I said, I'll just take two. And they're, they've already been shipped. FedEx has already told me. They, in fact, <clears throat> they're supposed to have been here Saturday, yesterday. But FedEx said uh, there, there was a delay in the company actually getting FedEx to pick them up. So with the Labor Day weekend, they're not going to be here till Tuesday. But FedEx said they, they'll be delivered Tuesday by 10 o'clock in the morning. So hopefully next Sunday you'll have new projectors up with you'll be able to see much better. And um, so <clears throat> anyway, here in the 32nd chapter of Psalms, Uh, I read this the other night, but I think it's worth going over again. Verse 2 said, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. See, <clears throat> that iniquity could have been passed on by our forefathers, or it could be our own iniquity. And also that word iniquity has to do with judgment because of sin. So, I mean, if you look it up, it's, it shows judgment or punishment <clears throat> is part of the definition of iniquity besides the perverseness that, that iniquity <clears throat> has. The Lord imputeth not. In other words, he, does it, he, he looks at you and he covers you. Even though you may have baggage, he's counting on you to stick with him until he helps you get rid of all of it. It says, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. You ever had God deal with you? You could feel God dealing with you? God's conviction about something in your life? You know, that's how God is. God, you may have everything fine, you're at peace with God, then all of a sudden the Lord starts stirring you up about something. You start trying to figure out, what's this all about? A little while God shows you something that he wants you to overcome in your life that you hadn't overcome yet. <clears throat> and the psalmist here is saying, I'm, you know, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture turned in the drought of summer. In other words, I was troubled. You know, I was in need. I, I was, I was wrestling, you know, with what was going on inside. I acknowledged. Then he said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I'll confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Aren't you glad that we're living in a time when you can find God? for your need. It's like that song said, he can be depended on. Right now, he is a savior that you can depend upon. And surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. You got trouble? Right, let me tell you where you can hide. Let me tell you where you can get away from your trouble. It's called the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior. You can, you can get away from that that what troubles you. You can rest in Him. He can deliver you and preserve you from the trouble. Thou shalt come past me about with strong songs of deliverance. Praise God. That's what we're singing about today. His deliverance, his, his help. It says, I'll instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. You see, there's a two-way conversation going on here. The one that needed the Lord and the Lord helping the one that was in need. I'll guide thee with mine eye. You know, God's eyes, it's a ministry. Those are the eyes of the Lord that go to and fro in the earth. God helps his ministry help his people. 
and guide his people and give them the right way. Be ye not as the horse or as a mule which has no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, at least they come near thee, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him. Everybody read that. Look up there and read that with me. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. You want mercy? You want God's mercy? Just trust him. Trust him for his mercy. Trust him for his help. By the way, I mentioned, you know, that girls, you know, suffer things, and, but so do boys. I mentioned this here the other day that <clears throat> they say, this is hard for me to believe, but if you look it up statistically, they say that that home that twenty percent of the population of the world is gay. One out of every five. That's hard to believe for me. But I know it's a significant number, whatever the number is. But I'm just showing you how corruption has affected mankind. You and I are compassed about with the mercy of God that we're not entangled with all of that. What a God. What a God that has saved me, that is saving me. What a God that's lifting me up. <clears throat> and we, we all have to realize that God's trying to make us leaders and saviors. He wants you to develop to a leadership place that you can rule and reign with him for a thousand years. That means you've got to get rid of your baggage. You've got to get squeaky clean. <laughs> you may not realize maybe what all baggage you've got, but if you keep serving him, he's going to help you to locate everything that's in your life and he's going to help deliver you. And he's going to help you sing and compass you about with songs of deliverance. You're going to be happy because you're going to say, my God, you're like me, my, my problem, one of my problems, I ain't telling you all my bad problems, one of my, one of my little problems was smoking. I'm delivered. I've been delivered from smoking cigarettes. That's my song of deliverance on that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, glory. God delivered me from my problems. You know, I'm realizing, I'm starting to realize, you know, sometimes when God begins to deliver you, if you're not careful, you'll get over in the, in the, uh, what's that seat of, in, in Psalms, the one, first chapter? Seat of the scorn. See, so you, you get to doing good, you get to thinking, well, look at them devils. They ain't doing very good. Look what's wrong with you. I've overcome that. But you know how God is? God wants to save everything. And that's how he wants you and I to be. He wants us, when we look at our brothers and our sisters, he wants to look at them with hope of what they can be, beyond what their trouble is. <clears throat> We need to get out and begin to woo people in here with their mustaches and beards and their mini skirts and their halter tops and all of their all of their drab that the world's put on them and let them come in here and find the deliverance of God. Hallelujah. You know, have enough patience on them to watch God. I used to love to watch before and after pictures. We used to have that, you know. Here's what I looked like when I came to church. You should have seen me. <clears throat> I remember Brother Doug York. He had an afro stuck out about like this. And a Fu Manchu mustache. Come on, we're doing like this. He's really something. 
I remember, you know, we'd take him to church. I remember one day I was telling Brother, I don't remember if it was Brother Scotty or who it was I was telling. There was a time back when I first started the church that I used to cut almost all the men's hair at church. I was their barber. <laughs> I remember one time we was fixing to go to Cisco to church. It's an hour and a half drive, but we, we loved it. We'd get in the van to go and we'd come home drunk in the spirit. One day we was going to go, and Brother Doug said, Brother Smith, you know, he had that big Fu Man chew mustache and the big afro up there on my platform playing guitar. He got the Holy Ghost that way. That guitar was strung around his neck, and he was just a dangling like this. He just was speaking in tongues, crying, and going on that big old afro and that Fu Man chew mustache. But one day he said, Brother Smith, you think you could cut my hair before we leave to go to Cisco? I said, I didn't tell him. I said, yeah, I'll be glad to. But down inside of me, I said, woo glory be to God. He finally sees himself. <laughs> I didn't tell him. That's how I was feeling, but it's all I can do just to hold steady. You know, just act normal. I was excited because I could see God working in his life. He looked so cute when I got finished giving him that haircut. He looked so good. He looked like a little Christian. <clears throat> and when I come back the next day to get him to go to Cisco, his Fu Manchu mustache was gone. <laughs> I almost jumped out of the van and, and run around it three or four times shouting hallelujah, but I had to be careful because I didn't want to embarrass him. But God, God's able. <laughs> He's able to reach down in your life and lift you up out of sin. Hallelujah. Even after you get here, he's still a lifter up out of sin. That it's got a hold of us. Sometimes it takes a while for it to turn loose. Let go. God's able. You know, he, like I was saying, you, you get in that seat of the scorn, but you don't care nothing about nobody else. You just want to judge them, kill them. But that ain't the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Christ is, you tell me about a problem with somebody and that compassion of God that works in the Holy Ghost will say, oh, let's, let's do all we can do to save them. Let's don't kill them. Let's don't run them up a flagpole. Let's don't make them feel bad. Let's try to save them some way. Let's do and it. Some, it takes wisdom to do that, but I'm telling you, God's able to give you wisdom. If he's able to make you a part of the bride of Christ, he's able to give you wisdom to defeat every sin that's got a hold of you and help be a savior coming up on the Mount Zion to reach down and touch the lives of every saint and every soul that has a need. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a Savior today. Woo! He's able to lift you up. He's able to save you from whatever else. Trust in Him. You'll be compassed about with the grace of God, His favor. You know, grace is just a, it, it's, a, it's the big pie. You know, they're just, when you talk about Different parts of grace. You know, God helping you with humility, that's just a little, that's just a piece of the pie. But I'm talking about the whole pie. Woo! I said, God, give me the whole pie. I'm hungry. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry for the pie of the Lord today. The big pie of grace. I can eat a whole pie. <laughs> It may take me a while. I can tell you, if you're going to eat the whole pie of the Lord, you're going to have to be sitting there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a God. What a God we're serving. Yeah, yeah. What a, have I done wore this one out? Okay. Okay. I better check my clock. I don't know if I've run out two deals before. What time is it? Okay. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> if 
Hear this 11th verse. We might as well read it. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. You know why you need to shout for joy? Because you can't be upright in heart without God's help. And that, that, when God gives you that kind of help, it makes you want to shout. Yes, it does. <laughs> he is a deliverer. He is our Savior. And he's more than able. Mm. Mm. I like that word, Sister Atkins. Mm. I like to hear her grunt once in a while. She gets a feeling God and it makes me want to grunt with her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Well, <clears throat> I hope you know today that you're in a good place. You're in a good place. A great Savior. He's here to help you. Not just when you first come in, but He's here to help you the rest of the way. Yeah, He's going he's gonna to deliver you from the last inkling of sin that may have a hold of your life if you keep serving Him. His, because His grace is surrounding you. It's compassing you. And you stay in that circle of grace and it'll work on you until you're squeaky clean. <laughs> I was sitting here today, I was thinking about, <clears throat> I don't know, we may do this before it's over with. <clears throat> we may have a baptism service for the church. It might not be bad for all of us to do our first works over again. What would happen if we had a baptism service and we all got in the water? You know, somebody would have to get out of the water and get dry so they could put somebody else in the water. <clears throat> I just don't know. God may, God may like that if we did our first works over and just let Him know we know what this is all about and we want to we wanna experience it again to show you how dedicated we are in this we want to answer every inkling that might be in our conscience that water baptism answers a conscience <clears throat> it, it's the answer to a good conscience towards God the Bible said <clears throat> he told the Ephesus church in a restored church to go back and do the first works over I wonder if they had a major baptism service just said, let's start this all over again. Let's all get in the water, water baptism tub and ask God to clean us of anything that needs to be cleaned. I'm, I'm still heading the other direction, Lord, and I want you to know it. <laughs> Glory. Well, you know, I don't know. Before it's over, God may have us. He may want us to get, you know, before the priest steps down into Jordan and it rolls back up on a heap. You know, God may want us, He may want us all to get circumcised before this is over with, before we really get into the promised land. Praise God. It's just good to be here today. And we, I, there's, I got up here early enough that there's, I won't take the whole service. So I'm going to leave some of it for y'all. Right. Praise God. Uh, Y'all want to, maybe we'll pray and receive the off, offering while uh, while some of you are feeling on the Lord. Um, <clears throat> Brother Bud, I mentioned downstairs, is he's doing better and the doctors say he's, he's going to, 
he's going to make it out of this. He's not going to die with this. Uh, but he's he's having they're having to wean him off of oxygen because he's became so dependent upon. He's still got pneumonia, double pneumonia, and he's still got to get get beyond that. And that's why he still needs oxygen. But they're trying to get him to where he can produce enough oxygen himself. And so they're trying to get him weaned off of it. And uh, even with, he's just got a cannula on right now, but I think they're still giving him 15 units of oxygen through a cannula, so he's still getting a high. What's a normal dose, Sister Hannah? Five units? Six liters? Yeah, he was on he was on a big facial mask with 18 units. That's what they had him on a high flow, and he it had he had to have that to keep his oxygen level above 90. He, if he dropped below that, his oxygen would drop down into the 80s. <clears throat> now they've got him on a cannula and down to 15 units, and he's he's having around 95, 96 uh, percent of oxygen, so he's doing good on the cannula, but if they drop him down, he, he has a hard time breathing, and he's his body's become dependent upon oxygen, and so it's going to take time for his oxygen to, um, his body to be able to, to produce enough oxygen where he doesn't have to have the help from <clears throat> the oxygen, assistance of oxygen, even through the cannula, so keep praying. No, he's not on ventilator at all. He's not been on a ventilator. They almost put him on one, but Actually, uh, when Sister Hannah told me and then uh, two or three others told me that they were having better results out of high-flow oxygen than they are ventilators, I actually told the nurse practitioner there that, and they talked to the doctor, and the doctor said, boy, let's try it. And they put him on high-flow, and he, his oxygen level come up to where he didn't, they didn't have to put him on a ventilator, but they were, they were thinking about putting him on a ventilator that day. I'm so glad that they didn't. Anyway, <clears throat> so, but now they're saying that if they can get him weaned down on oxygen enough and get him to doing well enough, that he should be able to go home at least late next week. So, you know, he, but he'll have, probably have to go home with oxygen, and he probably, I mean, they might get him where he don't, but he can't fathom that he could make it without oxygen. In fact, if you take oxygen away from him, even get it down to where he has to really strive to breathe, he has anxiety attacks about it. <clears throat> and they give him, I don't know what this does, they give uh, uh, these breathing treatments. And somehow that chokes him up. He gets choked up. He, he don't like taking them. In fact, in fact, he got so choked up, they, they went in there and gave him a treatment and, he, and left him and left. And he said, I thought I was going to die. He said, I got so choked up, I couldn't breathe, and I kept pushing the button. They wouldn't come, and he thought, this, this is going to be it. I ain't going to make it past this. I can't breathe. And finally, they got in there and got him back on a mask and got him back up to 18 units for a little while to get him over it. But the next time they gave, gave him a <laughs> girl come in there with that breathing treatment, he said, you ain't leaving here until I get over this. He, he told her, he said, I ain't, I ain't taking the treatment if you leave. I ain't take you stay in here with me. <laughs> so he made her stay with him. Anyway, so I talked to him on the phone first time yesterday for several days, and it's really hard to even understand him because he's having so much trouble talking because it, you know, his, his breathing's affected so much that he'd get, you know, it's like he's breaking up. Like somebody talking to you on the phone, they're breaking up. It's kind of what it sounded like, but. <clears throat> Anyway, keep praying for him. He he's he's doing good, and it looks like he's gonna he's gonna dodge the bullet this time. So thank God for that. Uh, and then, what else do we need to pray for here today? Who? Oh yeah, Sister McGowan. She's still in recovery mode. So let's keep keep her in our prayers. It's good to see brother brother Ray Weaver here. We appreciate having him. <clears throat> uh,
keep praying for Sister Susan too. She needs her prayers. And, and pray for Brother and Sister Johnson down in Georgia, Brother Ron Johnson. Pray for the Shelby Weaver family, Alice and the family. They need our, they need our, our prayers. Cindy's mama is, uh, she's, it looks like she's going to have to have a, does she have a fibrillator? It's on the outside, but she may have to get it put inside. So, you know, she's getting up in age and just gets to that place, you know, when she's up in her 80s and she she's, pray for the family. They're having to try to figure out how, you know, it's hard to figure out how to take care of somebody that don't want to be taken care of. You know, they want to be independent, and that's that's everybody wants that. But finally, you have to come to a place to realize I, I need some help. So pray for them. Pray for that family. And Sister Cindy is a big part of this burdens on her and Brother Michael, and so they need her prayers. What else here today, Sister Areva? What's his first name? Carter? Carter Rogers? Rogers? All right. Sister Linda? Fibulator? Yeah. Pray for Sister Donna. She's, she didn't get too good a report from her heart visit with her heart doctor the other day. And so they're saying she may need a fibrillator. So let's pray that God would lift her up. Brother Donna Henderson. Um the De La Rosa family, all right? Yeah, let's remember them. Brother DJ. All right. Uh, a co-worker, friend, all right. Sister Jerry. Wow. Okay. All right. Pray for Brother Jerry York, too. He hadn't been in church in a long time, and I know he's somewhat afraid of the virus. Uh, so let's pray for him. Let's pray that God would help him. Sister Abraham also needs her prayers. The McPhee family, we need to keep praying for them. They keep saying they're coming next Sunday, but they something hinders and they don't make it. So... I know they're fearful of the virus, I believe. Uh, is that right, Sister uh, uh, Sister Crafton? Yeah, she's close to her, so she knows that, that part of this virus has really got them fearful. And, and, you know, I'm not certainly not trying to put pressure on somebody that feels like they ought not to, to come, right, come out right now. But at least we can pray for them. Um, what else? Janique, Sister Janique, she's having to travel out of town, out of state on her job right now. So she was on our Facebook uh, uh, Bible study the other night from somewhere down in Florida. I can't remember where she said she's at, but... Huh? Fort Lauderdale, yeah. Sister Hannah... Asher, yeah. Let's pray he finds a job in Little Rock. I'm, I'd like to proselyte him to Little Rock, you know. I mean, I think he's free to come here if he can get a job here, but he needs to get a job. And so let's ask God to help him get a job. We need all the help we can get here. Sister Gail? Sister Brenda? 
Yes, and Brother Steve Wallace. Remember him. He's he's uh, having trouble. And of course, I think some of this coronavirus is fearful to him with his health health situation. So let's keep him in our prayers. Sister Amy. Unspoken request. How many of you got an unspoken request? My Lord. All right, let's stand and ask God to help us with all these needs. Oh, Lamb of God, Jesus, help us today. My Lord and my God, these that are serious condition in their, with their health, Brother Bud, all of these that were mentioned here today, Sister Cindy's mother, Sister Angie, oh, God, help us, oh, Lord, these that can't be here right now, that whatever reason, Lord, would you touch each one, the McPhee family, Brother... Uh, Brother Jerry York, would you touch him today, Lord? Oh, God. Blessed Lamb of God, Sister Abraham, and those that were uh, at home today, God, reach out to them and touch them. Lord, lift us up. Help us, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lamb of God. Meet our needs and help us. Oh, God, consider our petitions here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, God, our trust is in you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. All right, God bless you as you give today. take just a sec. Um, the church has signed a birthday card for you, Brother Smith, and, and Brother Fisher, if you would come up. I think it might be over there. Sign it for us. We're going to receive this offering for the church, obviously for your tithes and offerings, but if the ushers would come, the ushers are going to come back around, and we'd like to receive a birthday offering for Brother Smith. Uh, so if you would go ahead and, and make out your checks and Pull out those secret $100 bills that you've got tucked away. Glory. Where's the check? Yeah. Uh, if they don't have cash and want to put a check in, could they make it out to the church? And then if we just go, go to the church, could they make it out to Brother Smith? How do you mind? Do you have a preference, Brother Smith? That's okay. We just have to be sure. Uh, I would do it after the church offering. Yes, yeah, so we're going to receive two offers. And then down in memo, if they would put uh, birthday. So if you'd like to, if you'd like to write a check, uh, we're going to receive two offerings. So the first offering will be your tithes and offerings, and the second, the ushers will come back through. And if you'd like to write a check there, you can write it out to the church and put for Brother Smith, and uh, Sister Durham will take care of that. It'll be a second offering, and then obviously Brother Smith, uh, we have this birthday card here for you that everyone has signed. And uh, Brother Fisher and I, he's welcome to say a few words as well, but didn't you enjoy today? Just the good preaching. Uh, we're, I was sitting in Bible study today thinking, um, Brother Smith has been my pastor uh, probably longer than any man I've sat under. And, uh, you know, I, I realize probably today more than before that I've probably taken that for granted and uh, I just want you to know Brother Smith we appreciate you we truly do and your leadership and your words of wisdom uh, how that you can go from one minute to explaining the future to us to the next minute bringing it right down to where we are today and what a privilege it is and so anyway happy birthday Brother Smith Thank you. Thank you. I'll just say Will said Brother Painter uh, appreciate you very much, Brother Smith. Happy birthday. And if anyone didn't get a chance to sign the card, Brother Smith will be probably able to give it right back to you. You can sign it and then give it right back to him. So just appreciate this opportunity. Uh, give from your heart today, both to the church and for this offering. Yes. Thank you so much.
all know Brother Junior Daves from Godfrey passed away last year. It's been almost a year now, but I can hear him reading this, and I'm not a man, so you'll have to apologize for that part of it. It's definitely coming from a man's perspective. Frank, Brother Frank Hetzel in Jerseyville wrote this poem, but it kind of reminded me, Brother Smith was talking about the spider today, and I'll just, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read it, but um, it says he's, and I cannot do it justice like Brother D Junior, I mean, I can hear him in my mind reading it. Some of y'all might have heard it too, but it still brings home a very good point. It says, he spun his web in my front door, a pesky little spider. When I'd tear it down, he'd do it more, this pesky little spider. When going out or coming in, I'd find he'd spun his web again, provoked till I near committed sin because of this pesky little spider. He left his web on my wife's hat, this pesky little spider. I declare we all but had a spat because of this pesky little spider. She said, I want to tell you, husband dear, I'll make it plain, I'll make it clear. I want that spider out of here, that pesky little spider. Now, if spiders could laugh at stupid men, no doubt he laughed and laughed again, for he saw my work in vain had been. I needed to kill the spider. I'm glad the revelation came. T'was like the sunshine after rain. My work no longer was in vain. I killed that pesky spider. Now, if there's a sin that weaves a web as this pesky little spider, and you feel the cords of wickedness pulled tighter, 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 there is a fountain filled with blood. It's wider, wider, wider. Just throw yourself at Jesus' feet. He'll kill that pesky spider. Available to hear it, and this was years ago, um, and I was, I don't want to get too detailed because I, somebody had shared a dream with me, and they were actually sharing it with me and a couple of other um, co-workers, but um, the dream that they had that they shared was the fact that there was a, that there was a spider web and that they were caught in that web and that that spider was coming at them. And that was their dream. That dream was a revelation to me because of where I was at at that time. And it was a confirmation to me that the Lord was showing me I could see that what that person was involved in and that he was protecting me. And I'm still here today and that person is not. And so... I just thought I'd share that since it went along with the spider. Well, I'm glad to be here with, I'm glad uh, everybody's here and I'm glad uh, my mom, and I have a mom and dad, and I'm glad that I have Jesus. Oh. <laughs> like those spiders, and I remember from a school, a story, it was, it was called Bruce and the Spider. And, and there was a war going on, and, 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 and the leader was trying to make a decision of what to tell his people, to his men to do. And he was underneath, he was crouched underneath uh, 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 shrubbery, and, and, and he's laying there, and he was trying to make a decision, and the spider above him was uh, trying to uh, weave a web, and he'd get a line, uh, you know, we, and then... 
something would either fall on it and break it, or, and it'd be gone again, and that spider would go back up, and he'd see it a little bit, and he'd come across again, and he'd weave another line, and, and before, then he'd, maybe he'd get two together, and he could see him just struggling to get another one coming, and something would happen, either it started raining, or, or the dew, or, or a bug or something would come across it and tear it down, and then he'd sit there, and he'd uh, felt sorry for the spider, but the spider had come back across again, and he had to weave another line, and he'd go across, and he got this uh, revelation after watching that spider so long, just keep trying. And he had his men to come out and do whatever needed to be done, and they won that part of the battle. So that's what I was thinking about when different ones was talking. You know, if I keep persevering and, and, and keep working and striving, eventually with God's people, with, uh, with his spirit, uh, this, this COVID-19 and different people passing off the scene and people getting sick and people worrying about it, getting concerned about it and getting fearful of it. If I keep trying, if I keep, uh, that's my goal. I want to keep on working. I want to stay on this path until I win the battle. I have to give my Sunday school class dirty looks. That's right. I'm looking at all of you. Where's Aaron? Okay. We've been talking about testifying. We talked about it before we stopped having Sunday school, and we're talking about it again. And I've been nagging them and telling them, you need to get up and testify, because I remember when I was their age that um, I didn't do that either. That No, I wasn't going to get up and talk. And there's no way, but, and I was thinking about, oh, you all talking about spiders. I don't like spiders at all. I don't care how little or big, they need to all die. And, and I was thinking about that too. And like I was thinking testifying is kind of like a spider and you're scared of it because I was scared too. And there's different kinds of spiders. There are different kinds of things we all don't like, but once you kind of face them and you kill it, I would kill it. Some people would let it go, but I would kill it. But once you face those things, they're gone, and you're over. And it kind of like your fear kind of goes away. I mean, it's still there, not that it's wrong to be scared. There's nothing wrong with being scared, but you feel like you're more equipped for next time. You, you know how you're going to kill the spider. And so anyway, what better way to get my Sunday school to testify than to do it myself? <laughs> and be a good example, because they all listen to everything you all say, <laughs> everything, and they watch all of you like a hawk, <laughs> and they, you guys inspire them, and you all inspire me too, but definitely I know in my personal experience with the kids, they do, they just really learn from you all, all the things, all the wonderful things you have to say and to give, they absorb it, and um, anyway, I just wanted to get up and and um, I guess conquer my spider, so. Um, <clears throat> I thought one of the Fisher girls was going to sing last week a little song. Sister, which one was that? Kenny. Kenny, are you going to sing us a song? Well, come on up there and sing it for us. didn't find out until too late last week, and I, I, we closed the service and didn't give her the room.
be servant of all.